this session, that is the third section of the series, we are looking at disability, handicap, and impairment. I believe these are no new words for you. Let's start with some information about the three problems we highlighted. More than a million people in the world today experience some disability of a form. People with disability generally have been found to have poorer health, lower education, and then few economic opportunities. They are also found to be very poor people. This may be largely due to the barriers they face and not necessarily to the disabilities they have. Disability is regarded not only as a public health issue, but also as a human right and development issue. Who, in its efforts, ensures that people living with disability have what it takes to make them enjoy life to the maximum. Let's look at our objectives for the day. In this session, students should be able to define disability, impairment, and handicap. They should also be able to describe the types of disability and finally discuss community-based rehabilitation. The topic under discussion is disability, impairment, and handicap. I want you to take a critical look at this picture. Look carefully at the picture. And you should be able to, as nurses, critically describe what you find in the picture and what you think is wrong with the person in the picture. I wouldn't give you any clues. By definition, disability is the loss, absence, or impairment of physical or mental fitness that is observable or measurable, which means when we talk about disability, it should be seen and it should be measured. Impairment is a disturbance in structure or function resulting from anatomical, physiological, and or psychological abnormalities. And handicap is the total adjustment to disability that limits functioning at the usual or at a usual level. I believe you can now define the three terms. They are so simple. Now let's look closely at disability, impairment, and handicap. Disability, impairment, as well as handicap may arise from health-related causes, such as from accidents, injuries, and congenital problems that lead to mental or physiological disability. Disabled people are considered by a school of thought as vulnerable people. You may or may not agree. And poverty, as you may know, is characteristic of vulnerable groups. So what that means is disabled people are or they tend to be poor people. Let's look at some facts from the WHO about disability. According to the WHO, over a million people live with some form of disability, and this corresponds to 15% of the world's population, meaning that 15% of the world's population have one disability or the other. Between 110 and 190 million adults have very significant difficulties in functioning. The rates of disability are said to be increasing due to population aging and global increase in chronic conditions. 
I have said already that disability is found in vulnerable populations. Lower income countries have higher prevalence of disability than higher income countries. And I believe you know what accounts for that. It's also been observed that disability is more common among women, among older people, and children and adults who are poor. So it looks as if, or it appears that, disability and poverty have links. People with disabilities often do not receive the care they need. Disabled people are said to be four times more likely to report being treated badly or being denied health care, which should not be the case. The fact that they are disabled doesn't mean they shouldn't have access to health care. So if any health professional, if any nurse should deny a disabled person, a vulnerable person, from having access to health care, I don't think that health personnel is behaving professionally. That should not be. Children with disabilities are less likely to attend school. It's been said that the difference between the percentage of disabled children and the percentage of non-disabled children attending primary school ranges, for instance, from 10% in India to 60% in Indonesia. People with disabilities are more likely to be unemployed. Global data also shows that employment rates are lower for disabled men and women, 53% for disabled men, 20% for disabled women. In some countries, the employment rate of people with disabilities are about 44%. People with disabilities are said to have worse living conditions, including insufficient food, poor housing, lack of access to safe or portable water, and sanitation compared to those without disability. It is required that people with disability are rehabilitated so that they will be able to function maximally in their communities and have some form of independence. People with disabilities should feel free to participate in community activities. In the United States, for instance, 70% of adults have had to rely on families and friends for assistance with activities of daily living. Some people do not even have access to this assistance. It is important that governments should be committed to help people with disability to be able to function in their communities. And governments can do this by promoting access to services, by providing adequate finding, funding amongst others. People with disability have rights, and there is the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disability, which protects, promotes, and ensures the human rights for all people with disabilities. And it is important that we look at this document and see what it holds for people with disabilities. How can disabilities, impairments, or handicap be prevented. I believe you all know about primary, secondary, and tertiary prevention. Screening services may help, assessments may help, health promotion as well as nutritional assessment. Let's look at rehabilitation. We have said that people with disability ought to be rehabilitated. By definition, rehabilitation is restoration to a former state of functioning or limiting of impairment and disability to the lowest possible level. Rehabilitation enables people with disabilities 
whose functions are limited to return to their home or community and live independently. That is one of the things rehabilitation can do. These days, we have what we call community-based rehabilitation. I would want you to read about it and see how best this is helping people with disabilities to cope in their communities. Community-based rehabilitation came up during the Alma Eta primary health care era in 1978. So find time and read about community-based rehabilitation. The Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities came into force as far back as May 2008. It may also interest you to read about this convention and know what it holds for people with disability. I wish to let you know that WHO has an action plan on disability. And this action plan covers the year 2014 to 2021. Do visit the WHO website, look for this action plan, and see what it holds for people with disability. People with disability to be well rehabilitated in their communities need assistive devices. One may ask, what are these assistive devices for disabled people? You can see the lady in a wheelchair. The wheelchair is an assistive device. You can see a lady or a young girl, an amputee, having something under her arms. What are they? That is an assistive device. I leave you to find out what that is. And with this man, who appears to be a little off the, the street, he's sitting on an improvised assistive device. Probably somebody in the locality or area did it for him. It's an improvisation. That is his assistive device. You may want to look at these references to help you or to shed more light on disability, handicap, and impairment. Thank you.